Hello friends, welcome to episode 18 of Music is the Answer. Today I'm talking about sex and how it isn't everything. Let's start off with this maxim, sex ain't everything. Sex ain't everything. Especially as an artist, you really do have to know and maintain that sex isn't everything in your life. We are all sexual beings, aside from the people who are asexual, and that's cool. Shout out to you asexual people out there who don't do nothing. Do your thing, make it work for you. I see you out there. But that ain't me. <laughs> I'ma tell you right now. I love myself, I think I'm sexy. I know I'm sexy, actually. And I'm passionate, I love sex, but I can't have it all the time. And here's why, because my creativity is fueled by my sexual energy. Every once in a while, I do love to have sex just to see how we're doing, to maintain my skill level, you know, because I gotta use it before I lose it, okay? We have a lot to use, so I've been putting it to work. Every once in a while, I let it out. Go and just do it. Jump on somebody, pounce. Jump someone's bones because humans, we need love and we're needy and we need affection and companionship. It's just fact. But at the same time, my creative energy needs to be preserved and this is how I preserve my energy, by like not just diffusing with everyone that crosses my path to the point where like I dilute my inner self. I can't dilute my inner self and in order to stay true to myself and to keep the influence as introspective as possible, I need to sequester myself a lot of times. That's just an extension of what I do anyway because I'm the type of person, I love my own company. I love being with myself. I am my own best friend. Isolation is good in moderation because in isolation you can think of things, you can hear your thoughts, you can have time to develop them, devise a plan of action so I use isolation as that that ether that I retreat to in order to reevaluate things in order to really see what's going on inside of myself and to just check in under the hood and optimize everything for the next time that I decide to come out because when I come out I'm coming out swinging bitch so know thyself that's the number one if you don't take away anything else from this video you should take away this know thyself because no one is gonna know you as much as you're gonna know yourself be comfortable with your thoughts I can't express this enough. Sometimes people's thoughts choke them. They get assaulted with their thoughts and they don't like to hear them because they just kind of like manifest into this nebulous cloud of angst and energy and just uncertainty and well, if my thoughts manifested into a cloud like that, I wouldn't want to fucking hear them either. But guess what? You have to practice. You have to practice deciphering them. You have to practice being alone with them. You have to process them on your own. It is your responsibility to put together a vantage point, an ideology of whatever situation that you're going through. If you need help, it's fine. We all need help at one point or another, but you do have to do the mental, emotional, and spiritual legwork necessary to get to the bottom of what you're feeling and to come up with like some vantage point of what actually is going on in your life and how you can impact and influence change in your own life and maybe the lives of those around you who need it. So if you want to be an inspirational force, if you want to be impactful, if you want to leave a legacy, you really have to know yourself. I mean, it all starts in the inner core and what you have to offer from your core, you radiate it outward. That's the true vision of artistry in my opinion. Some people I know, they're really not comfortable with their own thoughts and that's why they kind of like spend all their times in and out of relationships with other people, monkey barring from one person to the next. You know, let me tell you, okay, first of all, that shit is bullshit. It's weird, you know, but it's also fucked up. Like, don't ever make someone compete for your attention. And, you know, it's just an asshole move. And I was in a relationship where a guy did that to me and it got to the point where I was just like, okay well I mean if you want me to compete and vibe for your attention because you want me to give you a sense of security so strong as the day is long meanwhile I'm not having any sense of security because you're going out monkeying about doing whatever the fuck you want to do apologizing for it later only after you get caught one that's not an apology because I fucking caught your ass and now you're sorry you're saying sorry to save face that's not an apology I don't want a fake ass apology I want you to hold yourself accountable for your actions and to fucking hold fast on your commitment. That's what I want. That's what I need. <laughs> but you know, this is just a microcosm of relationships and how they play out into your artistry. I mean, don't vie for anybody else's attention. Do not waste your time chasing after someone. If someone wants to be chased, that's fine. But those juvenile games we play in the kindergarten playground, all right? It's called Duck Duck Goose. We're not doing that here in adulthood. We don't do that over here. No, only after you become comfortable with your thoughts and the rest of your being and yourself and your perspective should you want to share yourself with another person because it is only just, it is only fair, it is only right. Stay tuned for next week. We got more episodes coming, more experiences to be had, more things to talk about. So you know where to reach me. Don't act like you don't know where to find me. Ciao, ciao.